Hello and welcome to episode 14 of my tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. In this one, I will tackle the topic of military squads. I'm going to go and create a squad of melee dwarfs with you, and we're going to gear them and create armor for them and set them up in a way that they can start working to defend your fortress. So the very first thing, we got to go on over to the nobles and administrators menu and assign somebody to the captain of the guard or militia commander, depending on your... Uh, no, sorry, militia commander, not... Uh, captain of the guard is the justice person. You need the militia commander for your military. So here you should definitely pick up somebody who's not going to be missed in terms of workforce. We're going to pick up the fishery worker here because military dwarves, they tend to be, in my fortresses at least, working 24-7 to get legendary in combat. So that's all set up. You notice now that this changes into create new squad. So here we click that. And we're going to go for the Militia Commander squad. Mind you that the Captain of the Guards squad is always going to be the, the police of the fortress, so to say. Now, we pick that. And here you get asked what kind of uniform you want to pick. This is merely a designator what kind of gear you want to have them to wear. For melee dwarves, you go for metal armor. Leather armor is really only for archers and weirdly enough you have an own set for archers so you can safely ignore leather armor. <laughs> we are going to select metal armor because that's the preset that is going to work out quite decently. So make the check mark go in here and here we now see in the equip area those yellow thingies mean that the dwarf has something in his sights that he want to use. He's just going to fetch it. The red sign here means that we don't have anything to use for that slot. When it comes down to shields, I highly recommend either leather shields or wooden shields instead of metal shields. The simple reason for that is they are much lighter, that means they don't weigh down your dwarf as much so he can't move faster, and ironically enough, a Leather or wooden shield can block exactly as well as a metal shield. It just will break a little bit faster, but really that's the only thing. And a cat leather shield like this one is powerful enough to even block dragon fire. Nobody knows why, but shields have the magical quality to even block dragon fire. No matter the material. Even a wooden shield, all of them. Now, when we go back to this, you see that not much has happened. So first thing, things first, we need to go for the barracks and then we manage the equipment. So barracks goes like this. We mark here again the entirety of the room. And now we select that the ochre crabs, it's this uh, squad here, is going to train here. That's one thing. You can also assign them to live there and such things, but I really don't see these as a necessary thing, the training tab, that's important. Next thing, schedule goes on constant training, so your dwarfs will permanently try to get better at what they're doing. And now, you notice, he has picked up his gear. The only downsides, no shield yet, and no boots. Classic problems. Let's fix these. So, the shield problem comes from the preset. We have told him to go for a metal preset, and therefore he's looking for a metal shield. We don't have a metal shield, we have a leather shield, so press material, and go for any material. Confirm. Oh, we have starving animals, let me fix that. So, and now you notice yellow icon means he now noticed that there are shields that he can use. He's now going to pick up and do that. The other thing, though, is a little bit more complicated. You see, the boots are still not being worn. Here's the weird deal. Due to the fact that he's wearing socks and shoes, he's unable to wear his military boots. That's a commonly known bug, and the only way to fix it is you go here and go for uniform worn over clothing and replace it with this one, uniform replaces clothing. And then. With a bit of dwarven magic, he's going to pick up that piece of uh, boots and he's going to wear it now. So, 
Here's one more deal. You can configure a lot more things than the ones that are here. So for example, metal armor is an iron mail shirt. We can now tell him to go also for a breastplate. We go for an iron breastplate and oopsie, you need to confirm by the way. That's what happens when you don't. There we go, confirm. And now he's again going for a bad and he's now wearing both of these things together. There's a crazy amount of layering that you can do here. I'm only introducing the basics here. You can now assign whatever you want here. There's an entire list of things and you can do that to your own liking, just what floats your boat. When it comes down to equipment, let's uh, go into that department. Equipment should be, in my humble opinion, always be made out of either iron, bronze, or steel. These are the best materials that you can go for. Every other material will be a little bit lackluster in whatever regards. Therefore, what you require to get started is a large amount of the fitting bars of your liking and fuel. I've prepared a couple of these to make things to get the ball rolling. Now, the standard gear for a dwarven squad looks for me like that. We go into the work orders menu. First up, I like to decide what kind of weapon I want to use. So, squads can be using either axes, that would be the battle axe. It's a very good weapon to sever limbs with. You can go for the Warhammer. These weapons are a little bit different, make them preferably out of silver. Best material for Warhammers out there. And skip the maces, they are just a lightweight Warhammer. The mace is just better. The short sword is the all-rounder when you don't want when you want something between cutting and stabbing the short sword is basically the jack of all trades of military weapons and last but not least the spear which is basically the armor penetration and critical hit weapon which is really good at killing off stuff that has a thick hide these are the most commonly used kinds of weapon for military squads we are going to go and create us a iron short sword stockpile. I'm going to go for four because I don't have that many things. A squad can be composed out of ten people, so ideally I would go for more. So the next thing I want is something for the head. Ugh. At least I'm trying to get the darned... yeah. Need to press enter, then you can go for it. It's this, this search bar thing needs to get reworked so badly. So we're going to go for a combination of these. Helm, breastplate, gauntlet, greaves, and if, if available, high boot, otherwise take a low boot. It's uh, depending on your civilization, sometimes these things are not available. So you can now combine greaves with leggings if you want to. So you can wear greaves and leggings, but you need to configure that manually. And you can combine breastplate with uh, mail shirt, however you want to. But I want to stress out at this point that I've made excellent results just with this baseline suit of gear that I'm f featuring here. I've killed dragons, forgotten beasts, whatnot. You don't need to go too crazy with the armor layering. Just do that if it's fun for you and you want to go for that. So this is a one-shot order. You can, of course, set this up as a permanent uh, thing as well. I personally like to create my gear as one-shot orders at the beginning of the game. And when I'm more consolidated and I have magma workshops running and I don't need to worry about fuel anymore, then where is where I'm going to set up automated processes. The last thing that we're missing now is the shields. So let's configure our leather to create us some leather shields as well. Can also work with wood. I'll leave it up to you what you want to use there. Okay, so next step, we select our new squad of people. So here again, just select people that are don't too important and avoid women. Simple reason, dwarven women take their babies up on out onto the battlefield. They are just like that. They don't care about it and they will then 
produce traumatized babies because the baby might be safe with the mother but it's going to get all the blood death and gore and that's not making the baby happy <laughs> so at this point we now need to wait until the gear has been manufactured you will notice that bit by bit these things will fill up and then you have your purse your your squad geared out and as soon as there are more than, I think, two or three people in your squad, they will start sparring in the barracks. So there will be training now happening. So they will develop their skills, and if you keep up this regimen of constant training here, you will have them legendary in about a year or so. I haven't looked at the calendar, but they grow stronger really, really quickly this way. So. The perfect moment to set up a military squad, by the way, is roughly between 50 and 80 person uh, people in your fortress. That's because sieges can be enabled at 80 people in your fortress, unless you change these, and weir creatures, lycanthropes, can attack you at 50 people per fortress. So that's why this is uh, this should be the moment when you should be th thinking about getting yourselves a military squad going and as you notice here they're picking up now weapons and you can also tell them to specifically use that weapon that we created for the squad so feel free to individualize to your own liking it really pays off also one other weirdness about this whenever you assign something manually and you press the confirm button, you basically trigger a big wave of refreshing. Everybody checks if there's some, something in, in the stockpiles he or she could wear. And if you have the feeling that your dwarves should have this stuff already in their paws, but they don't, go in there, press confirm, should fix the tri uh, thing. And I so far don't know how to save these presets. I haven't uh, checked out to save presets, but uh, basically you can also configure a squad with leather shields and whatnot, and then you just go and change that up. Here you go into a name and then you save the uniform and then I didn't try it out myself, but it should then show up when you select a new squad. So last thing that I want to show you, to control these, you can either station them like this, then they stand around and wait until something happens. They'll attack hostiles and protect your people. And as soon as they're done, you need to cancel that order though. Otherwise they'll be standing there forever and grow really, really unhappy. You can also order them to kill something outright, but you cannot do that to friendlies. You can also only kill hostiles. You click the hostiles, you press confirm, out they go and go kill stuff. Here you can also go for defense orders and training orders. Yeah, well, we don't need these because we are automatically training permanently. And last but not least, you can also assign patrols. So you can just put up different points on the map and then these will be patrolled. But as you see here, this is a perimeter where they always try to fill the vector somehow so you can't get them give them some point things but yeah that's that not much more to know about that don't try to get your dwarves involved in uh, bigger combats before they have a certain skill level that's a very 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 important lesson that will keep your people alive for a longer period of time and when you want to start out with the entire military complex, start out small. Start out with a couple of people that you can gear out, and then you expand on that. Because nothing's worse than a squad of 10 people that are totally missing their gear. That won't get you anywhere. So start out with something you can produce, something that works on out, and in the worst case, you gotta go and make your fuel out of charcoal like I do here. All right, I hope that was helpful for you. We're going to go and cover 
the topic of the newly elected mayor and nobles in the next episode. And feel free to drop me your comments, ask away with questions, and of course I'd be really really happy if you'd give this video a thumbs up or even subscribe to the channel. Either way, I really want to thank the supporters of the channel. I deeply appreciate you guys, and of course, check out Patreon, Paypal, and buy me a coffee if you want to join on in. I'd be really ha uh, happy about that. They are the topmost links in the description box. Also, you will find in the description box a ton of other Dwarf Fortress uh, playlist links and stuff that I made. I really tried my best to make this game accessible to everybody, and I hope this video helped you with that. Thanks for watching this video until the bitter end, because if you're still around, that means you haven't turned off, despite all the ads, despite everything else, and yeah, thanks for being around. Hope you're going to join on in next episode as well. Have a great time until then. Bye-bye.